Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Ahana and here we talk about all things related to stationery, planners, productivity, organization and in general trying to live your best life. If that interests you, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also click the bell icon to be notified every single time I post a new video. So deep work as defined by the author is all about performing professional activities in a distraction-free environment and with your full concentration. It is about pushing your abilities to their limits and providing some extremely valuable results which will be very very difficult to replicate. That's the dream isn't it? So if we look at some examples of deep work in the real world, um, let's talk about JK Rowling, right? That is also another example that is cited in the book. She had to complete the final Harry Potter book and do you know how she did it? She checked into a hotel suite at a five-star hotel in Scotland away from all distractions and completely harnessed that deep work energy to finish her masterpiece. Also, Bill Gates had programmed the first version of Basics in just eight weeks with this, the same kind of deep work concentration that we would really crave in this day and age. He used to fall asleep on his keyboard and pick up right from where he left off. So this is the kind of work ethic. This is the kind of deep work that fuels genius. So why is deep work that effective? Neuroscientists have discovered that intense periods of focus will lead to um, development of myelin around brain neurons and that allows your brain cells to fire faster and it supercharges all your cognitive abilities. So basically if you practice deep work properly and with enough concentration it's going to upgrade how your brain functions. In this world which is always connected and we're always looking for a quick dopamine fix we're always looking for that instant gratification and something or the other is always trying to pull our attention away from our tasks at hand being able to be in a distraction free environment with that much concentration and produce something truly great is frankly a miracle so the author is highlighting that deep work allows you to stand out amongst the noise and create something of immense value. Plus, it is a skill that is becoming increasingly rare because we are constantly like ambushed by a wide variety of distractions. Now that you know what deep work is and why it is super important and what the greats have done with it, the harnessing of deep work, let's get a little practical and think about how these strategies can help you in your life to become a productivity champion, right? So I'll break this down into three parts. First, schedule distraction periods. Second, build deep work habits. And third, have a daily shutdown. Let's think about scheduling distraction periods. So we are surrounded by distractions all the time and at home at work school college etc and sometimes we give in to those distractions but we can slowly and steadily build up our tolerance to those distractions holding focus until such time until like there is a designated time that we are allowed to give in to those distraction and avoid distraction in between those times right it's like if it's like you're trying to just hold off until a certain time and then you're allowed to do that thing so, so first what you need to do to create these distraction periods is that you identify the times when you are very prone to distraction you, you know when you are surrounded by a lot of notifications when you know that you're going to be disturbed when you know you're going to be like around maybe a lot of people and you know this is the peak time when you get the most amount of mails messages etc second you have to create distraction time blocks so for during these times you have to set aside a particular block of time for these distractions so for example if you know you're going to receive like say 50 emails in the morning why don't you schedule some 30 minutes in the morning hopefully not as soon as you wake up but sometime in the morning when you will be checking your emails uh, if you know that you're going to get a lot of social media notifications from your friends in the afternoon maybe schedule a 30 minute block in the afternoon for checking those notifications right so if you kind of schedule this it's also something that you're looking forward to like okay i can open instagram say at 2 30 pm and you are also not 
thinking about that when you are actually focusing on your task at hand third use a distraction journal so this has actually helped me a lot so i kind of have like a notepad when i'm working and any kind of thoughts that comes to my mind that is not connected to the work that i'm doing right now i always uh, write it down say if i have to you know uh if i am trying to look for like driving classes if i am trying to um i have have to order groceries like instead of just taking my time away from the task that i'm doing i just note it down that okay this i have to do and then it's out of my mind and i don't think about it anymore and when i get to my next distraction period i will pick up that task and get that done this also keeps uh, your mind clear and allows you to focus on your deep work time until your next distraction period comes and finally you have to gradually extend your focus period so if you are familiar with the pomodoro technique which is basically 25 minutes of focused work and 5 minutes of break you can look at it in this way if you initially have a lot of trouble you know keeping of yourself away from distractions you can start small like that and then as you get better at resisting distractions then you can slowly you know build up the time period of your deep work session so from 25 go to 30 40 45 etc gradually to an hour or more and then you can like kind of um put your distraction periods make them fewer and put them far between so you can get more work done Next we look at how to build our deep work habits. So creating habits and routines will make deep work a very natural and easy part of your life. But here you here is how you can establish those habits. So first you pick a consistent time, like a specific time of day that is best for you for, to engage in deep work. So like me, I am a morning person and early in the morning is when I have like my mind is the clearest and I can actually sit down and you know figure out a solution to a problem that i'm stuck in and i can properly engage in deep work for hours in the morning towards the afternoon my energy kind of dwindles and in the evening i really don't want to do anything that requires a lot of um thinking so for many people they are most creative and most productive at night so maybe that is when you schedule your deep work so you know where wherever you will have fewer interruptions and you will have the most focus is the time of the day where you should schedule for your deep work second you should create a deep work space first you need to designate like a distraction free environment you can't be like sitting in the middle of the kitchen table where everyone is just walking around talking to you people are just coming in and out deliveries are happening just everyone's talking this music is playing you know that is not an ideal environment for you to get any kind of deep work done because that is just full of distraction everywhere figure out a home office or like a reserved workspace and that's where you should ideally be you know in that environment to do any kind of deep work and also let me know in the comments below if you want to see how i have set up my home office i would love to give you a tour of that third we need to eliminate all distractions so you know what your distractions are right if you are your phone is like on full volume if all the notifications are active if you have a lot of unnecessary tabs open on your desktop which you are not using currently if you have like a bunch of chats open you know all of that is going to be a distraction you will always be expecting some notification to pop up and as soon as there is like the slight ding of a notification you are going to be drawn to that instead of the work that you are doing so just close all of that silence your phone keep it in a drawer just don't look at it until your work is complete and then in your next distraction period you can always access it and finally for this point you need to develop a ritual a ritual or a routine which will signal the start of your deep work session and the end of it so it can you know you what i usually do is i have this like a small um I used to have in my house earlier a small table clock and I would put an alarm on it and it was it was one of those where you would like you know turn it around and set a timer for it so as long as the timer is ongoing like as soon as I've set the timer my mind is like okay I am working now I'm not going to get up I'm not going to do anything else and as soon as the timer was done I knew I could take a break so it was just as simple as that you it could be for you as simple as you know just maybe lighting a candle or um putting on some really slow soft instrumental music maybe it's just like drawing a curtain or closing a door just just that signal to your brain that this is the time that my work is starting and I should not be disturbed 
from this time onwards and the final point is the daily shutdown to ensure optimal productivity and to recharge yourself it is very very important to have a daily shutdown ritual so i usually do this uh, after i'm done for the day first thing i do is i have to plan for the next day so before i completely end my work day close my planner laptop everything i just sit down and jot down a few things that i have to do for the next day and i just list them out as what are the priorities what are the meetings that i have to take you know any kind of things like that so i will um, put plan that in my like in my planner and just put like a star next to the most important things and if i write them down they are off my mind and i have followed this for years now it has really helped me so this is kind of the method that i always follow next is you have to declare that you know your shutdown is complete like once you finish planning you have to declare that it's complete and i am not saying that you have to like shout out or talk to yourself or whatever but it's just a signal to your brain like like i said in the earlier one like when your focus period is done you have to put out that candle or switch off the lamp or you know open the curtains do something that will signal to your brain that this time it's like done now your focused work period is complete third you have to unplug from work completely so once your shutdown ritual is done don't engage in any more work related activities because you need the rest to just you know recharge yourself and come back stronger the next day so what i usually do is when i'm not in my working hours i will switch off the work profile on my phone so i don't get any emails during that time and and like in my company we don't really reach out to each other anyway um, on personal chat so it's always um, it's always like the professional means of communication and nobody usually will um, contact you when it's not your work hours so i can safely like i can safely switch off the work profile and disengage from work because sometimes you know it's not like every day you get a new problem and it solves itself that same day so if you are constantly thinking about work you're not really resting you're not really using that free time and then you won't be able to come back to your focus time period the next day with that like same amount of um, energy so it's very very important to resist that temptation to check emails or think about work tasks when you are in your leisure time and finally we have to focus on our rest and relaxation also so it's not just that you know you work and then you don't do anything you have to use your downtime when to do activities that you truly enjoy that recharge your energy and creativity whether like for me it would be painting or reading or dancing and um it it really gives your brain the rest it deserves because if, again if your leisure activity is also like scrolling on your phone then you're not getting that proper rest and it's not, so that's not even an active fun thing that you're doing and it's not really helping you so that is something that you need to think about by using all of these strategies into your daily routine you will see that deep work will come more easily to you become more manageable and you will be able to produce impressive results remember that mastering deep work is a skill it will take time and practice but it will reward you heavily in your increased productivity and creativity and as well as you know get that personal um satisfaction that you've achieved something and you, when you've put in so much effort so you have to start implementing these strategies so that you can unlock your full potential and that's it there you have it this was my my takeaways from deep work and i think it's an incredible book and if you want to gain more insight for yourself i would highly recommend that you pick this up i really enjoyed reading it and i have been implementing all these strategies in my daily life since the time that i found the book and i read about it and i also know a lot of my colleagues and seniors who have really benefited from this book so let me know if you do read it let me know if you have read it and what you like the most about this book if you have implemented any of the strategies in your life and how it's going for you i would love to chat with you about it and i will see you here next, next week. week like, like share and subscribe for similar content and let me know in the comments what you want to see from me next time okay bye